and welcome to my channel. I'm Stephanie and this is the week 31, July the 28th until August the 3rd weekly wrap up. Can we talk about how many readathons I did? Um, so just to get this out of the way, I read 11 books last week. Readathons, that's all I gotta say. Readathons, readathons, readathons. It has been crazy. Also, I was in, I am still currently, which is kind of bad because, um, oh, reading slump. Let me finish that uh, thought there. In a bit, not reading slump, in a TV watching slump. So I was watching the originals on Netflix. I got all tied up and tangled into it. So I started this journey by watching Legacies, and then I started to sort of work my way back. I was like, okay, one season of Legacies. I was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna like this. And so then I was like, let me see what where this young woman, this tri-breed came from. And so I started watching the originals. And the first couple seasons I was like, ah. But then season three, three, four, and five, I was so here for it. And then that ending in season five, I have been in a Netflix slump since then, which meant I got a whole bunch of reading done. As you guys know, I read 14 books last week. This week, I read 11 books and I participated in two different readathons this week. Um, one readathon actually is like a month long readathon. And then this other one was 24 hours. You will know which ones are which once I go through the books. So being that there's 11 books that I need to get through and then also my current read, um, which hopefully I don't forget to put in there uh, this time. I get talking and then forget. So what did I read last week? Last week I started the week off with Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbard. I place this in contemporary. I give it four stars. I give it three Steam fans. I read it as an arc for Reviewathon, which, just to give you a clue, when you hear this, Reviewathon is a Netflix. I got Netflix on the brain. NetGalley readathon that's happening from July the 22nd until August the 30th. It's to clear out your uh, NetGalley get your percentages up and things like that. Your cue there. This is also an author of color. In this story, you have Chloe who has an invisible disability. And I enjoyed this. Now that I think about it, I'm having a bit of an issue on, you know, what I really liked about it. Um, I did give it four stars. I found it to be entertaining when I read the book. She has an invisible disability and one that took a lot of time for her to get diagnosed with. So she is a gamer? Nope. A programmer or a designer or something like that. Something to do with computers so she doesn't have to go to work all that much because, or out of her house, not work. She does work uh, because she does deal with migraines, which was a little bit interesting because the invisible disability she has, which is fibromyalgia, I can never say that word. Um, if it gives you migraines, but you work on computers, I don't, that's kind of interesting. Um, I suffer from migraines, so when I do have a migraine, I can't look at a computer screen or any screen for that matter. So that was a little weird. But everyone's symptoms are completely different. But that's, that. anyways. So she has a superintendent that lives across her apartment complexes, sort of, uh, foyer, there's a thing, and he likes to, he's an artist that goes topless when he does his art. So she stares at him through the window and everything like that, and then they end up having a connection, and this is sort of their story. So, yeah, that's where I'm at for that. Okay. Next book, Whispers in the Dark by Letitia Newton. This is a dark romance. I raved about this, and I'm still going to rave about it. 
I give it 4.5 stars. I give it four Steam fans. I read this as an ebook. I read this for a Polycon 20 and 20. And oh my goodness, this book is not for everyone. I will put that out there right now. But if you like serial killers and you like dark romance, this is a book you need to pick up. So serial killers, right? Uh, Alana is kidnapped when she is young and Jacob is the kidnapper's son. The two of them have to sort of work together to get free. Serial killers. Uh, then you fast forward to their lives now and craziness. I'm not going to tell you anything but that, but it's crazy. It's dark. It's twisted. There is sexual abuse that goes on in it. There's torture in graphic nature. There is serial killers. Can I? Serial killers. Serial killers. Woo! Yeah. The next book that I finished was The Affiliate, which is Ascension Number 1 by K.A. Lindy. I placed this in New Adult Fantasy. I give it 4.25 stars. I give it two Steam fans. I listen to it as an audiobook. I read it for Romanceopoly, for the faraway land space. And this book follows Serene. I believe that's how you pronounce her name. And she is in this world that we have. Society has gone about having females sort of become debutantes. That's what I sort of equate it to. You're uh, announced and presented to the community. Then you're placed in sort of these internships where you learn different things and she had this special thing that she ended up doing and now they're now that she has become an affiliate uh in a certain class she has the eye of the king as well as the prince and you know because in the prologue there is a description of the prince and the or the two princes getting told a sort of fairy tale about a chosen one coming to them later on in life and everything like that. So there's a lot of fantasy buildup and world building that goes along with this. So I was a little taken back by that. But K.A. Lindy gives me angsty new adult and now she just threw on some fantasy and I am here for it. There is a magic system that I'm not completely understanding right now, but I'm sure it will be explained to me in the in the uh, next four books, which I'm looking forward to getting to, especially since the month of August is my fantasy urban fantasy uh, reading month for Romance Genre Thon. The next book that I finished was Resist, which is Wicked Ways number one by Kay Bromberg. This is a contemporary suspense. I give this book 4.5 stars. I give it three Steam fans. I read it as an ARC for Reviewathon. I got it from NetGalley. Also, Kay is going to be a author at a Polycon, so a Polycon 20 and 20 challenge was read, uh, this was read for. <gasps> Woo! Okay, so craziness right we have Vaughn who is a madam and you have Riker who contacts V V for her services to have a girl accompany him to different events and everything like that well when something happens to that girl V or Vaughn has to stand in for that girl who these two it could be enemies to lovers. It could be he's a divorced lawyer, so he is like total alpha male. Oh my goodness. Um, let's see, what else? There is a element of drug use that goes along with this. So their backstories um, have drug abuse and drug use within there. Um, not necessarily our main characters, but the secondary characters, and there's a family element that goes along with it, and can I just say, the ending of this book, I want the next book, which is, I believe, Reveal, and it comes out in September. I am trying real, real hard for NetGalley to hurry up and get it so that I can request it, so that I can get some information, because I need to know 
what's gonna happen. The next book that I finished was How to Hack a Heartbreak by Kristen Rockaway. I placed this in New Adult. I give it 4.5 stars. I give it two Steam fans. I read this as an arc for Review-a-thon with NetGalley and this book follows Mel. I thought it was Melanie but it, I think it's just Mel and she works as a IT specialist or at a help desk where they have these hatchlings which is this like male dominated computer startup company and every single time they have something wrong with their computer they take it to her to fix it but they treat her like shit and it was very reminiscent of pretty much any male dominated career that's out there um i related to this book in so many ways. I'm not a computer nerd in any sorts of way, but I am familiar with being in a male dominant career. Oh my goodness. So all of the things that she went through, all the guys were pretty much assholes. Oh my goodness. And she does this dating app and she gets stood up like three different times. So in a drunken rage, she sort of creates a new app where ladies can go and rate the guys that they had been on dates with and sort of give out a warning for other ladies and it blows up. Her group of friends helps with this uh, adventure and then there's a bit of a love story. So in a way, it's not necessarily a true and all out romance. It is a little bit of a women's fiction or women's story yeah women's fiction story um because it definitely deals with girl power and finding yourself and trudging your own path sort of you know against all odds even when the men in your life or, or in your surrounding area is trying to keep you down the next book that I finished was The Guy on the Right by Kate Stewart, and I placed this in New Adult. I give it five stars. I give it three Steam fans. I read this as an arc, and this book follows Theo, who is that guy in the picture on the right that always gets mistaken. You know, he'll start talking to someone, but because he has this profile pic of a group of guys, the he's always looked over. And everyone thinks that the big, pretty, muscly guy is the one that they're talking to until they find out that it's actually the guy on the right. And this book has so much fun, sassy banter between our characters. You have Theo and you have Lainey. Lainey is a senior in college and Theo is in the band. And Kate does this thing with her Spotify. She places music into the story and really, really intertwines it. It made me love this story even more. I had songs to go with different scenes and it was just amazing. I really, really loved it. And the fact that she doesn't tell us what Theo does in the band is even more superb loved every second of that. This was the last book that I read in July and now, so you've probably already heard a lot about some of those the books that I just talked about, now we're getting into August and the first book of August that I read was Let's Get Textual, uh, Texting Number One by Tegan Hunter. I place this in New Adult and I give it five stars. I give it three Steam fans. I listen to it as an audiobook and come to find out, oh my goodness, this fits for my Apollycon 20 and 20 challenge as well. What? We have Delia, who is a senior in college. Not that it really matters. I think she's a senior in college. Regardless, that doesn't matter. Delia gets a text message from an unknown number, which she thinks is her brother because her brother is a flake and he likes to change his phone number like all the time. And no, it's not her brother. It's this guy named Zach. So they start this sort of friendship over text messaging. They eat eat food together and they find out that they're in close proximity and they start a relationship like this. It was so much fun. It was so sexy because even though they don't really get to the sexy, sexy part until like 
closer to the end. Um, all of the sexual tension was there from the get-go. Oh my goodness. It was just so much fun. Wrong number, rom-com sort of new adult book, and I was here for it. Thank you for all those that recommended it, and I can't wait to get to the rest of the series. The next book that I finished was Wrecked by Her, Like a Hurricane, number one, part of Duet, and this is by Christy Lee. This is a debut novel for this author. Oh my goodness, I give it 4.5 stars. I give it one Steam fan. I read it as an arc, and I read this for Reverse Readathon, which is the 24 hour readathon held by Dewey's Readathon, which is reversing the time we went from 8 p.m. until 8 p.m. the next day. Oh, I place this in contemporary and this book follows Jules and Hunter. They are high school sweethearts except when Jules decides to go off to college and does not come home. And then she gets a phone call 10 years later I think it is or eight years later something like that things have happened to her. She now has a kid and Hunter stayed in town. But when Jules comes back to town, she comes to find out that Hunter has still been in contact with her mother. And oh, my only flaw with this book was that one of our characters name is Stephanie. And I'm not very happy with what happens to Stephanie. I'm just going to leave it at that because I don't want to give any spoilers. But if you followed my Instagram and I think I might have put it on Twitter. I don't know. But if you follow any of my Instagram, you sort of know what's going on. But I will say I am looking forward to reading the next book. I also got a blogger box for this book. Oh, for this duet. So excited about that. If you haven't seen the pictures of my blogger box, check over on Instagram because it's amazing. Christy made me feel really, really good because I get depressed sometimes when it comes to, you know, feeling like I am doing these reviews and hyping these authors and recommending these authors and their books and everything like that. And for a debut author to, like reach out and be like, hey, I appreciate you. It was so touching, so touching. But this book does deal with grief, so be ready for that and lost love and a complicated relationship and just so many things, so many things. Loved it so much. Can't wait to get to the next book because some things better happen. I'm gonna be real mad, which I think it will because it's a romance, so yeah. The next book that I read was Almost Had You, which is Harbor Point Seal, uh, book number two by Rachel Robinson. I give this book four stars. I give it to Steam fans. I read it as an arc, and it releases either it just released or it's releasing next week. Uh, I read this for Reverse Readathon, and this book deals with Mercer, who is our Navy SEAL, and Clover, who is his sort of friend. They're both from a small town and when he is on leave in that small town they sort of reveal that they have crushes on each other and she is trying to figure out a way to get out of her small town, out of the the bogged downness of her life and her family, get away from them to start and be her own person. And yeah. So... This is set in a world that Rachel has been building over the la um over like two different series. So the United States has went through some serious issues and our Navy SEALs are doing the good work of that. So there is some of that talk as well in there. The next book that I finished was Rough Sketch by Kate Canterbury, and this is an erotic short story. I give it four stars. I give it four Steam fans. I listened to it on the podcast of Read Me Romance, and I read it for Reverse Readathon because it was quick and I needed to get my weekly podcast fix in. This book follows Nira and Gus, and she is an uptight executive. He is an artist that is working in the compound that they got to work in residency. He likes to give her birds. Yeah, wooden birds. 
of all sorts of nature and they sort of have this like hate going on I don't know if, it, if I would call it hate but they just have a dislike for each other or they find each other to be uptight he finds her to be uptight she finds him to be just flighty well there are misconceptions their sex scene that happens in the second episode of the podcast is super hot um but you can feel the sexual tension building before you get there so there's that. And then the final book that I read last week was Unlucky in Love by Carrie Hart. I place this in rom-com. I give it five stars. I give it four Steam fans. I read this as an arc. I read it for Reverse Readathon and a Polycon 20 and 20. I'm so excited to see Carrie for once. For, for like, oh, super excited super excited to see Carrie. Uh, so this book follows Clover and Austin. Austin is a sort of shock jock, um, love advice radio guy, and he is best friends with Clover. Clover is all about this binder. She has her life set in stone in the binder, and that's how life is supposed to turn out. It's supposed to be flowers and it's supposed to be proposals she is with this douchebag of a guy for six years until he dumps her and she goes to austin to sort of find refuge they are best friends and uh, love love loved it because it's that whole friends to lovers and carrie did an amazing job at showing that funny and how we can cr how we can not cross the line with our friends until you see something that you hadn't seen before and then it's like light switch turned on um wow my friend's hot <laughs> I just it was so great it was so great and the sexiness was there the friend banter and she has friends as well Carrie ends up using Google as a verb I think I said that right, but it's funny because Clover likes to Google things. Uh, that opening scene is absolutely amazing. It's so funny. Uh, I posted the first couple lines over on Instagram, so if you didn't see that, check that out. Whew, that was a lot of talk. So I am currently reading Driven by Kay Bromberg. I wanted to read this one last month. It's about a race car driver and uh, I'm just going to do it because I'm getting it from Hoopla and I don't want my my credit to be to go expire and I haven't read the book. So that's what I'm currently reading. I am also building a list for urban fantasy. As I said earlier, urban fantasy, fantasy, and I think there's one other thing that is for Romance genre -thon. You will see that video on Tuesday. And I'm really going to get ramped up into that. Because last week was a half a half month. So we're going to get into those urban fantasies and fantasies. So if you have any suggestions, put them down in the comment section for me that I need to go check out. Please leave off J.R. Ward, the Black Dagger. D uh, please leave that one off. It's too much of a time consumption, and I don't know that I can handle that. Also, kind of leave off those big, long, huge series. Those don't work for me either. Unless I can find the entire series on, like, Audible, Scribd, um, Overdrive. What else? I think that's it. Or Hoopla. Yeah. So, suggestions for you guys, right? Um... I think that is it. I didn't forget to do my currently read my current reads. Yay! I'm excited about that. But this video is gonna be super long. Oh my gosh! Whew. Alrighty, let's see. Have you read any of the books that I read last week? Um, what I'm currently reading? Let me know what you think about them. Do I make them sound interesting? Did I talk too much this month this week? I don't know. Um, <laughs> as always if you enjoyed this video please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel also there is a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel thank you for watching and we will see you guys later